And we're on. Yay! We almost didn't think it was going to happen. We right? didn't believe it, no. Scott was counting down <laughs> for us. We were getting so ready for you, the viewing public. And we thought, oh, is it? No. Mm -hmm. Give it a minute. Close, sir. Well, welcome, everyone, to um, MCAT's Christmas special. I'm Joel Baird, General Manager of MCAT. And I'm Kim Anderson. I'm on the board of MCAT and with Humanities Montana. And this is like the last show. Thank you, Kim. Once again, thank you, okay, Kim, for but being I, on the show. I have to make a huge admission. Yeah. Two weeks ago, yeah. I forgot. Well, it's too, too <laughs> I just didn't show up. And we thought it was because she didn't like the lighting of the show before. Well, there's that. Yeah. But <laughs> so we changed a few better. things, and she's yeah. back. Anyway, no, I love doing you, this. You good, know that. Good, thank you. Because we've completed another year, it's hard yeah, to believe. I know. Of doing the show. We want to thank you guys for watching, for tuning in. Today is Monday. It's December the 15th. It's a beautiful day. I got all my packages off. Oh, today. you're very good. <laughs> so I'm happy. I yeah. feel great. I have my back pain as an excuse. I know. Do you want me to go? Do you want me to do things for you? No, no. Apparently, I'm going to do it all when I'm visiting family on Long Island. Good idea. I'm going to go out, you know, like on a get a nephew walker. And <laughs> get a so, nephew to help yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. So you viewers at home may see this show for two weeks more, and then Scott and I are going to put together um, a history of MCAT through the ages show because MCAT's wow. going to turn 25. That is it's really kind of insane. Neat. 25. On April the 22nd, which is Earth Day, it'll be 25 years of MCAT cable casting That's in Missoula. That's unbelievable. It is kind of crazy. So we'll give you more details on shows. I guess we'll have a big party down here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it'd be silly to have it in a restaurant. You, most of you wouldn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> We'd overeat. So we'll have something here all day on that day. It'll be a to-doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, more MCAT news, just briefly. MCAT is going to close for the holidays the two weeks that are um, the Christmas and, and New Year. So to the public, so don't, don't feel shy that you couldn't come down and call. MCAT will be closed Friday, uh, December the 19th at 7, and we will reopen in the new year, January the 6th, at 1 p.m. But in the meantime, you know, if you have um, interest in checking out equipment, it's a wonderful time to do so because... You'd have it for two weeks and two oh, days. Oh, so get down here before yeah. the 19th. This week. And get your, yeah, get yeah. your stuff. Unless you're watching this after, in which case it doesn't We're sorry. matter at all. Kim, you want to say anything um, from the Humanities Montana perspective? Um, just very briefly, we have another grant deadline coming okay. up. Uh, December 20th. So you've only got five days. and, and uh, But I want to remind you, if you've been working on something or planning something, major grants for projects that cost over $5,000, and research fellowships. If you have a project and need to need money to spend the time or to travel to uh, do research into a humanities uh, area like literature or history or philosophy, um, those grants are available as well. All the guidelines are on our website, as is the application. Nice. HumanitiesMontana.org. Yes. So this is the show in which we don't have so many guests yeah. for events. Though um, I thought Tom Benson was going to be here. I didn't see him when we started. He may show up. Just want to remind you that First Night is happening again this year, and it's a wonderful evening of storytelling uh. and music, and there's all these venues. So it's really worth checking out at missoulacultural.org, though we might see him. Yeah, he might drop in. Yeah. And we have a special reading guest. Yes, we do. Welcome to Carolyn Patterson from the Missoula Writing Collaborative. Thank you. So Thanks nice for being here. Thanks for coming. Well, when we were thinking, you know, Joel and I like to read Christmas or wintry type things. And when I thought of who else would be good, I thought, oh, kids' poems. Everyone loves oh, kids' poems. Yes. <laughs> and kids love to write about Christmas. Right. A lot of kids do. So first, before uh, you read some poems for us, tell us what's going on with the writing collaborative. Well, uh, things are kind of in high gear. Um, we're in... Um, um, most of the Missoula schools and uh, people are teaching, you know, kind of in the midst of the, their teaching right now. Um, we're just about to launch a big NEA grant in on the uh, Salish Kootenai Reservation, and we're really excited about that. 
Um, we're going to be bringing um, our Missoula writers to work in collaboration with teachers on the reservation and then having a lot of Native American uh, visiting artists um, in the schools there. So that's going to be happening in Me. the new year. Um, we're launching our fundraising drive right now, so um, look for your letters in the mail. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we're also, you know, starting to put together our fundraising campaign, and that will probably be happening in April. So um, things are really good. They're, yeah. you know, people are teaching and back in the schools. The PTAs have been incredibly supportive. And, um, you know, I think things are going, we have a terrific board. We have a great bunch of writers, and um, so things are going really well. And for people who don't know, explain what happens uh, when the Missoula Writing Collaborative, what you are and what you do in the schools. So um, the Missoula Writing Collaborative um, is actually a collaborative. We've been in the schools for about 20 years. 20 years is our, this is our right. anniversary oh, this wow. year. You guys were like born yeah. together. Yeah. So yeah, um, and uh, what what the writers do is they go into the school for an hour hour a time, and they basically work um, teaching a writing some kind of a triggering exercise with the teacher, and um, and you know they might read a poem or they might uh, explain some kind of triggering exercise. Um, the kids write for about twenty minutes, and then at, at the end of the hour, uh, they all get the kids get up and read their poems. Yeah. And um, they write everything, and this is from third grade through fifth grade, and in high schools and middle schools. You know, at the beginning, uh, they'll do poems about silence. They'll do, they do f um, forms like odes and um, pantoums and high bands and haikus. Um, and kids write uh, poems about memories. They write, it's really very exciting. And what's most exciting, I think, is that you know, a lot of times you go into the into the classroom, and the first thing, especially the boys say, is, "Oh, poetry." Oh, they don't like that. <laughs> and then after two or three sessions, they're like, "Oh, poetry," <laughs> uh, because they kids really learn the the joy of language and the joy, especially the joy and kind of the empowerment of ex learning to express themselves. And uh, you know, I was explaining one time that you know it's sort of like going in uh, with a uh, like an old coloring book, you know, and with a little figure that's blank. And, you know, you're, in a way what you're doing is with words, you're teaching them how to kind of color in mm -hmm. their lives in a lot of ways. Um, nice. and, uh, and it's really thrilling to kids. And it's kind of like music, you know, that yeah, connection yeah. of rap to the spoken word. Exactly. And who is that fella? Have we had him on the show? You know, he does that kind of speak yes. out thing. Yes, Taj. Thank oh. you. Posh. Posh. Spoken word yeah. poetry. Yeah. I love. Really popular. And actually, I've taught that in um, at at um, in Sealy Lake. Um, it's a really big movement now that spoken word poetry, and kids love yeah. it because it's kind of a cross between poetry and rap, and um, and it's very powerful. Um, yeah. They really love it. Uh, well, the, the Writing Collaborative writers have had an impact on so many kids over 20 years. Generation? I mean, my yeah. son, Charlie, had Mark Gibbons at Paxson, well, not 20 years ago, but 15 years yeah. ago, at least. And I'll never forget the day he came home with a poem that, was, that started out, My soul is a tiger stalking in the night. Wow. I was like, oh, my God, he's a genius. <laughs> Passionate genius. It was so that. cool. So, and I mean, that's happening every single day with the kids. Yeah. Um, and there really is a difference between um, having a professional writer work with kids mm -hmm. versus having, um, and I mean, teachers are incredible and do so many things so well. But I think because we're, writers are struggling all the time with, you know, how to use words and how to express themselves and how to conquer their own demons and, and put into language the stories they want to tell. They're, you know, they're experiencing kind of on a daily level what kids are, they're still big kids, you know, yeah. in a way. Because <laughs> writers just never mature. Because they right. never mature. And so well, the kids are an inspiration so, to them. Well, the right. kids are inspiration to them, and they, they, can, they can help unlock that in, in kids, I think, uh, in a way that um, people that aren't writing maybe as regularly 
Yeah. They have a harder sure. time doing, I think. Now, I know you can't stay forever, and we want to hear kids' poems. Can you read us some? Well, yes, I picked a lot. Well, uh, got a lot. Uh, so these are publications of the writing collaborative? So, yes, what I have are uh, a variety of anthologies, and I promise I'm not going to read for hours, but, uh, <laughs> but I just thought I'd bring a selection of kind of winter poems, and so there's some Christmas poems, um, but these are from uh, the anthologies. At the end of the years, the at the end of the year, the writers um, compile all the poems or a selection of poems from their different grades. So I have anthologies from Cold Springs Elementary and um, uh, C.S. Porter Middle School, from Paxson School, um, from a school in Helena. Um, and um, I just thought I'd just read kind okay. of a nice. selection of things that I found. Uh, this first one is about a star by Clayton Oglevy. Transform into a gas, travel up to space, so cold, so bright from all the stars. Travel to a star, go through the start but not all the way. Stay inside the glimmering star, transform into a piece of star. Every time you move, it is like flint and steel rubbing together, making sparks and fire, hot flames throughout the inside of the star. All the other stars are like Peyton looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> How the red flaming fire mixes in with the ocean blue, so cool, so bright. The star starts to drift away through the black hole and never returns back to the spot where it used to be with the red flaming fire mixed with the ocean blue where the other stars used to look at it. Oh. Nice. Yeah. And this is, uh, let's see, where's the one? Oh, this is one. Um, it's from an exercise um, called I Am. Um, and uh, this is one I just thought would be fun to read because it's about Missoula. And <laughs> we all love poems about Missoula. Yes. Yeah. I am from Missoula, where the sun shines down upon the mountains, where the current quickly bolts down the river and the sun always sets with a pink shimmer. I am from Missoula, where there is always freezing cold snow at the very peak of the mountains. I am from Missoula, where the M Trail reveals the city's beautiful lights and where the Rocky Mountains stand high, tall, and bold. I am from Missoula. And that's from C.S. Porter Middle School by a poet named Amara. Nice. Very nice. Isn't that lovely? I love the repetition in that. Yeah. Where the current quickly bolts down the river. Yeah. <laughs> that's a middle schooler. That's a middle schooler. Mm -hmm. That's 7th, 8th, or ninth grade? So that would be 6th, 7th, 8th grade. Seventh, eighth eighth eighth. grade. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this is from uh, a fourth grader from Paxson. Ice. Ice is cold. Ice is freezing. Ice comes in cubes. Ice comes in blocks. Ice comes in sheets that are deadly and black. Ice is cold. Ice is freezing. Cold is good because snow is here. Cold is bad because snow is here. Cold is bad because ice is here. You need ice in the summer, but you don't need it in the winter. <laughs> Maybe you don't need ice in the summer because you might not be around because you died in a deadly car accident oh because God. of ice. You went flying into a ditch. Ice is hard, never soft. Ice cuts you up when you're down. Ice is cold, always freezing. Ice is deadly and black. Oh. <sighs> By Sam Skillet and Mrs. Howells. This kid's grade. gonna be wearing a black T-shirt. <laughs> Don't you think? Uh, he's gonna be moving to Florida. The James Dean of the fourth grade. That was really good. I, I like that observation. And think of that. Yeah. You only want the ice in the summer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You want the ice in the summer, but you yeah. don't want it in the winter. You might not need it in the summer if you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Filled by black ice. <laughs> Mm. Okay, you got to read something a little cheerier. Okay. This is oh, Ode to White. That was my dark poem. Yeah. <laughs> this is not so dark. Ode to White. And this is from uh, fourth grade in Lolo. And uh, this, uh, this is a student of Marnie Prang. She always has these great yeah. kids' poems. An angel glides down to see the snowman dancing in the night. Snowflakes melt on my tongue. Grandpa's hair so wavy and fine. Frosted snow sparkles in the moonlight. Icicles drip on the snow. Snow crunching under my feet. The king moving the boulder away. Mm, wow. 
I know. Isn't that mysterious? That yeah, list? that's a wild leap. I think it's an leap. Easter reference. Oh, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. You yeah. know, the tomb of Christ, yeah. and then he moves the boulder away. Very impressive. Impossibly. So this is my Christmas poem. And actually, um, when I taught the student, they published this in the Christmas edition of the um, the Helena paper, oh, the wow. Helena Independent. Oh, nice. So I, I've always loved this poem. And it's by a um, student. Um, her name is Natha Ragged Road, Robe, and it's called Christmas. I remember snow white as white could be, the smell of Christmas in the air, fresh cooked pancakes, presents everywhere, some with red shiny paper, some with puppies, the sound of paper tearing, rip, rip, the sound of robots making noise, presents everywhere, then the sound of screaming as we jump into the air, then the cold snow as I hear again, again, Back up the hill we go, go for another, ride down the snow mountain again and again after the warm chocolatey taste of cocoa and marshmallows, yum. Then for another ride we go over and over again. We laugh, we even cry, then we build a snowman after we go for a walk downtown to see the Christmas parade, apple cider and gingerbread cookies. Then we walk back, Christmas all over, all sleepy, all quiet. Oh, that's great. Oh, that I really is... like that one. I got into that one. That's a perfect It's like Christmas, a mini isn't it? child's Christmas in Wales. Yes. You know, yeah. The all whole day. She, she ticked off all oh, the no. important things. <laughs> I, the presents. Yeah. I love the, the paper. A lot of scents in it. The smell yeah. of fresh cooked pancakes. Fresh cooked like that. pancakes. Yeah. I know. And the sound. You know, I know. It's kind the of sound like a of the paper tearing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That. That's really great. For yeah. fourth graders, like, wow. That's yeah, amazing. I know. Fourth yeah. grade poem. Well, Carolyn, thank you so much. Yes, that's the time. Yeah. We kept her later, even. Yeah, I know you have to run, but thanks again. Yeah. And you'll have to come back in the spring and let us know about summer or spring readings and summer camp. Yeah, okay. I'd love to, and I'd um, maybe bring some kids. Yes, that read. would be fun. Um, they would, I would, they would love it. Super. Um, well, thank you so much for oh, having me. Stay, stay right there one second. Yeah, okay. because we're going to say to Scott, show that old video of first friday oh that's a good idea or not first night first night first night this is first night years ago you guys when they were first coming up with it sam says they can show it He's, it's a thumbs and, up at the control yeah, room. go ahead and show it and then we'll bring <laughs> out teresa cox from carousel for missoula there you go Good evening and welcome to a live call-in panel discussion about First Night Missoula. My name is Michael Marsalek and uh, I'd like to talk about the event tonight and encourage participation from the community. This is a live call-in program and after a few moments we'll be giving out the phone numbers and asking you to join us. I'd like to introduce our panel tonight. Um, first of all, myself, I'm Michael Marsalek, I'm Drum Brothers Drums and a Missoula resident and I'm on the board of directors of First Night. To my left is Graham Duye, the executive director of First Night Missoula. Deborah Bond is um, an artist in our community as well as vice president of First Night. Troy Fracky is a Loyola student and as well on the board of directors for First Night. And David Burt lives in St. Ignatius. He's a pastor and um, also president of First Night Missoula. I'd like to maybe start by, I'm sure there's uh, some of you that have heard about First Night or some things about First Night. I'd like to start out by maybe asking Graham to talk a little bit about what is First Night. First Night is actually, it's, it's, it's not a new concept. This is something that's being done in other cities worldwide. It's 18 years old and it's a time of celebration, a time to ring in New Year's Eve differently with the community by offering alternatives to our traditional New Year's Eve revelry. And he was telling me about this event that he was familiar with and uh, thought that maybe it'd be a, a nice thing to experience here in the Missoula area. And it just sounded wonderful. And uh, Graham and I met, and then uh, Deborah uh, joined us, and we have uh, just spent some time talking with people here in the community, trying to uh, uh, build support for it, to see what ideas they had for making this uh, uh, event unique to Missoula. 
and uh, from there it's sort of grown. The place is downtown within walking distance, and they'll be revitalized, I think, by having this opportunity to stay open long hours on what often is a very dreary day in the middle of our deadest part of winter, when we often have whiteouts and it's 20 below zero, we can all bundle up as a community and laugh and sing and dance on the sidewalks as we walk back and forth to the different venue sites. It's an opportunity for the community to unite and become one in the celebration in the winter and to love each other and their arts at the same time. It's a high quality event and these activities would eventually work into uh, activities throughout the downtown area, as Deborah hinted upon, the venue sites would be, sure, your theaters, your auditoriums, but also your churches, your storefront windows, your shopping centers, a way to enliven the downtown area. And we're inviting artists to be creative and putting forth thought and ideas. And anybody, because this is for you, we want to hear your thoughts. The button that you see, uh, there are some buttons here that uh, from some other first night cities would be the emissions ticket, and it's designed to be affordable. We want the event to be accessible, and we also want it to be affordable. For, for the, about the price of a movie ticket, people would have access to these events. Pick up your schedule, you pick up your program, you look in your program. There could be 15 different events happening at one given time. Pick your choice, and then evening, a way to bring in the new year. Okay, we're back. You guys. Hi. Teresa Cox is here from hey. your Carousel for Missoula. Teresa, welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for always letting me come and tell oh, people. No. Oh, I love yeah. to see you. So, what's going on for Christmas Santa yeah. at the Carousel? Yeah. Well, we have a couple things. One, I'm talking about Santa's breakfast, but I also want to remind people that we are open for free rides on Christmas Day from 11 until. Oh, what yeah. What a great idea. 11 till? Up to 3. To 3 because at some point, you've got to get those kids out of the oh, house. Oh, that could be more <laughs> Too. You have to send dad with those kids yeah. out of the house. <laughs> so you can get stuff done. Yeah. Right. right. And we do it with volunteers. So we don't ask the employees to come oh, on, in on nice. Christmas. And the volunteers really feel like it's part of their Christmas tradition as well. Neat. So uh, we got some posts when we did it for Thanksgiving. We got some posts about corporate greed and how can you oh, make your employees work. Oh, not really greedy because we didn't make any money. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it was free. Yeah, so, and it's volunteers. So, yeah. It's, oh, um, that's a good it's point. It's a great event. So, yeah. they're, they're in a great mood. Yeah. The yeah. operators will be just saying, this is our gift and a way of having fun on Christmas right, is to see right. people on the carousel. It's a, lo a lot of people don't have family here or stuff, mm -hmm. and this is a way to be surrounded yes, by people yeah. having a wonderful holiday. And they only work an hour or two. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's just a, a fun break in their day as well. And they know how to run it, right? They There's do. no. They are trained. <laughs> and I have training sheets for each one of them right. before they can go out okay, there and do it. Good. Um, yes, yeah, so and safety we use is assured. Yeah, we use volunteers on first night, too, and I know you're going to talk about first night. Yeah, Tom oh, yeah. Benson is so, here. Yeah. Uh, but Santa's breakfast is Saturday the 20th okay. from 9 to 10.30. It's a come and go thing. You don't have to come at 9 and stay for mm -hmm. the whole time. We don't set up tables or anything. There's chairs around. People get comfortable sitting in the chairs. Um, First Security Bank is our sponsor again this year. They've done that as, uh. as far as I, back as I can remember. And Wheat Montana on 3rd is, is providing the rolls. Ooh. So, yeah, really super yummy rolls this mm. year. Um, so 9 to 10.30 on Saturday. Santa is there, so you can whisper last-minute requests into his Oh, that's so yeah. cute. Yeah. Down at the carousel. At the carousel, okay. yep. Um, we do free carousel rides, of course. And then this breakfast of rolls, fruit, juice, coffee, milk, um, so everybody gets something oh, yummy nice. to eat. And it's, just, it's really fun. A lot of families make this part of their Christmas tradition. Yeah. Well. Now, there's the website. Oh, we just we lost oh. it, but it was up there just oh, a second that? ago. Okay. Um, and is there a, a charge for the there breakfast? There is a charge. It's $6 for adults, so if over 12 is $6. 3 to 12 is $4. Under 3 is free. Great. And it's well worth it. The food's great. Um, yeah. We have the real Santa. Oh, you, you know, got you see the, Santa's I heard. Items, there are, are the knockoff Santas, Santa. yeah. but yeah. not down you there. You got the, the real carousel. one. The real guy. So kids yeah. could go and say, don't forget, it's only five days, they can remind Santa of various requests. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and keep, things keep, just keep occurring to you. You better hold Santa what you want. And you then, oh, yeah, I want that, too. So this You is thought chair. your list right. was complete, yeah. but. <laughs> well, and parents can, too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Oh, it sounds really great. This coming Saturday, so we mentioned to you guys that we'll, the show will go on until the 29th. So if you're watching it this week, it is this Saturday, December the 20th, 9 a.m., 
at the Carousel at Karis Park. Yes. And we do like it if people let us know they're coming. Oh, is that oh. right? Just to make sure that we have plenty of food. It's hard okay. to plan. Yeah. yeah. So should they phone an RSVP? They should, yes. So it's okay. 549 8382. And what is the website, Teresa? It is carouselformissoula.com. So, Cara there, there it is. Carouselformissoula.com will give you all the information you need, plus the phone number Correct. if you didn't get yes. it written down. Yeah. Great. All right. And it's lots of fun. Great way to start that last Saturday before Christmas. Wonderful. And then after the breakfast, free rides on Christmas? Yes. On Christmas from 11 to 3. And you're, volunteers. and you're also open um, on New Year's Eve for First we Friday. Are part of part of First Night. First Terrific. Night, so yeah. we had too many First Fridays. We so. actually are open every day of the year, with the exception of 12 days in January when we do major maintenance. We give free rides on Thanksgiving that. and Christmas. Yeah. Uh, on Fourth of July. Night. Uh, we're open on the 4th of July. We don't do free rides, but yeah, yeah, yeah. we are open. But you're yeah. open. That's really yeah. dedicated. It is amazing. And didn't you guys just get something? Like a renewal of your lease or something? Yeah, we've been given permission to expand the building. Ooh. Oh, that's what it I was. I haven't really put it out there yet because I'm looking for okay. some starter money before we do that to say, look what we've got and we're going to build this building. Mm. Yeah. Um, but we have permission and we are looking for grants. Excellent. Or wow. donations. Yeah, <laughs> donations. <You're free. laughs> Give me a call. Yay. It's Christmas time after that's all, right. right? Yeah. Well, you'll have to keep us posted on yeah, how that goes. Yeah, please do come back. Me. You have to uh, excuse. <laughs> Who is the guy? <laughs> The guy there is, is some the guy fire. tending the fire behind me. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I don't know. He, what, I guess he has to do something. He can't just let it burn, you know. He has to arrange the logs. Realism. Right. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. I know you got Thank it. Thank you very much. Thanks for waiting it. around, Thanks. too. Oh, well, absolutely. Uh, Carolyn read the kids' poems. are really cute. So we'll be back, you guys. Um, before we get to our serious reading, um, we're going to visit with Tom Benson from uh, Missoula Cultural Council. You're going to talk about this elusive first night. night. So we'll be right back. Montana Hope. I am Montana Hope. For the last 30 years, the Montana Hope Project has been granting wishes to Montana children who face life-threatening illnesses. I'm Montana Hope. To make a donation and help their wishes come true, please visit MontanaHope.org. We are Montana Hope! Come on, guys. Rolling? Good. When hiking in bear country like this, it's important to remember your essentials, like bear spray and knowing how to use it. Liam, where's my bear spray? Uh, I put it in the bottom of your pack. I didn't mean, how am I supposed to get it quickly? When adventuring in bear country, remember, bring bear spray and know how to use it. Hike in groups, make noise, and don't run. Be bear aware. Uh -oh. I'm sorry, we are. we are back with Tom Benson. <laughs> From the Missoula Culture Council, we were talking about that clip we had shown yeah. earlier. Michael Marsalek was in it. Graham Duya, I love his last name, so I gotta say it. <laughs> who was um, the first person, right? The first uh, proponent of right. the first thing. The first director. And yeah. I was asking Tom, but we came back while you were watching that um, PSA. If you recognize the fellow in the beard, the well, light beard, I, I couldn't recognize. David him. Burt. David Burt. He was our first board president okay. uh, of First Night Missoula when it was his own organization. Yeah. And he, um, he then left Missoula. He was a minister, and I think he went to Great Falls. Posted, yeah. as they say. And, uh, and that's the, and then I never heard from him. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was so we are yes. talking with Tom Benson of the Missoula Cultural Council. Uh, and the Cultural Council, of course, is the sponsor of First is. Night Missoula. First Night. That's right. It's coming right up. Which this is, is our, coming up. This is our 21st annual. Congratulations. So a year so older than... Missoula and, Writing Collaborative. And Missoula Writing yeah. Collaborative. Well, I'm going to be 25. 25. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But it's interesting that these organizations are maturing, you know? Yeah. Uh, so are the... 
the people associated with these organizations. Yes, yes. we're all maturing. <laughs> we're all maturing. <laughs> or at least getting a lot older. <laughs> yeah, there's that. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, should you tell people who have never heard of First Night? I yes. tried. You know, sure. I didn't know you were here, so I tried to summarize it for sure. feel free. It, it is a community-wide celebration of the arts on New Year's Eve. Um, and it, uh, initially it began in the city of Boston uh, in the mid-1970s as a, a way... Um, as a way of bringing the community together. It really is a, it's, it's like a barn raising, only you're not raising a barn. Uh, you're not building a, a playground or a carousel or something like that. You're building a community festival. Yeah. And so it, it, uh, it, it takes in all of what the community has to offer uh, in terms of the landscape and the buildings and the organizations. And that's the stage, uh, is yeah. the community itself. And then, um, and then the third part of it is that it's New Year's Eve. So that's what you're celebrating. It, that, that's, and New Year's Eve is a, an ancient holiday. It's renewal, looking back, looking forward, all that kind of thing. And finally, it's a celebration of art. So that's what you're celebrating. So it's, so it's community, celebration, New Year's Eve, and art, all wrapped into one shebang. Nice. And it, and uh, it works for Missoula. It hasn't, oh, it hasn't yeah. always worked for every community. There yeah. were at, at one point, there were close to 200 cities around the world that did it, and, yeah. and now there are not so many. But, but this is the town for it. I mean, yeah. it's a university town. It's a um, university dedicated to the arts. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a humanities mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. college. Oh, yeah. Not to say Bozeman is just all tech and that's all they do. But the talent of our village is kind of extraordinary. Oh, yeah. And Absolutely. the drive of the populace to be noticed is inexhaustible. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is very good. So, you know, this is I'm, excellent. I was just sitting, I, I'm sitting on a, on a focus group in, in the planning committees oh, yeah. that are going on. Uh, on the, I'm on the livability one. And very interesting, when they tracked the, all of the surveys they did mm -hmm. in Missoula, the number two thing people said was the strength of Missoula was arts and culture. Well, That's I'm glad you're on the livability two. because I am too, but I'm not going to be able to make any meetings until, <laughs> until I January. I have seen you there, until and I'm going to miss this busy. one too. <laughs> yeah, you are busy. Yeah. You've had a lot going on. Because look at the size of the pamphlet. I know. How many different events? Tom? There are 80 different events. 80 different events. Going on in about 30 different venues. Yeah. Uh, you wow. mentioned the university has, has a lot of them downtown. Yeah. Uh, it all starts at Southgate Mall at noon. Mm -hmm. uh, we even have a Glacier Ice Rink as part of part of the part of the picture. Oh, that's and, neat! Uh, yeah. And there's going to be a, a midnight run at uh, peak, uh, a New Year's Day, New Year's Eve run. So um, there, there's just a, there's a lot going on to celebrate our community. And as always, will there be that that um, it's not like counting the ball down, but it's the recognition of the the very time it becomes the new year. Yeah, we have uh, in the university center, we have the uh, um, traditional New Year's Eve big band. Yeah. Uh, Ed Norton big band will be playing. And uh, you mentioned Michael Marsalek. The drum mm -hmm. brothers will be uh, right. in the commons at the same time. And, and, and they will count down more or less at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, just paging through this catalog, there are so many, so many, there's some fascinating new looking events and then right. there's some favorites that kind of people demand return every year, they do. right? Yeah. Like yeah. our own Christian Ackerman who works That's at right. MCAT yeah. and he is going to be the mime. It's a beautiful show for kids too because right. one thing Christian does is the mime doesn't know stuff that's going on like there's toilet paper stuck to the mime shoe, but the mime doesn't know, and the kids go nuts because <laughs> they know they're right. smarter than this That's person right. on the stage. And they're like, no, no, do this. And he forms his bond with them yeah. so fast. I think when Christian started doing this, he was a high school student. Yeah. And, wow. And he's still That's, now well, he's going to be a father of two. That's yeah. Funny. So, um, in order to take part in all of the yes. first night activities you can possibly cram in to 12 hours, <laughs> um, uh, what do people do? You need to buy a button, which right. I didn't put on, but uh, oh, it's yeah. a, a little button that, uh, that costs $15. Uh, it goes up to 18 on the day of, but $15 will get you into every event. Um, there is one event that you need to purchase a $2 ticket two as well as the $15 mm -hmm. and that's our first night spotlight oh uh, yeah right. and at, at the Wilma theater because it's so popular we just have a uh, uh, a ticketed for that but it's it's not much extra but those but that one button will get you into all all of the other events 80 um, events 80 events 
I wouldn't try to see 80 of them. No. But, <laughs> but you, it, you need, and, and they are sold at about 20 different outlets all over town, a lot of oh, grocery okay. stores, uh, pl you know, the usual places, Rock and Rudy's and right. Warden's. And yeah. we, you can also buy them online at our, on our website um, at MissoulaCultural.org. Um, and also, you need, you'll need to get a program. Right. So. Right. You definitely need one of these programs to navigate your evening. Yeah. Do people use a tablet or smartphone and see it? You know, it, it is. Um, I, I, you know, I don't do right. that. I but, don't uh, do that. But, <laughs> but it, our website has, every, has the whole... The so whole lineup could. on it, and you can. You yeah. can right. do it as well. You had but some it, young person set that up for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Otherwise, people, you could go to Albertsons, East Gate, North Gate, South Russell, Tremper's, Butterfly Herbs, Chapter One. Yeah, you, you know, folks. And Hamilton. Oh, Hamilton yeah. is, is the bookstore. Is Bookstores, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Harvest Foods in Lolo, Holiday Inn Downtown, Missoula Downtown Association, Pink Grizzly, Rock and Rooney's, Ruby's Inn, Safeway on Broadway and Reserve. Southgate Mall. Would they go to the info desk at Southgate yes. Mall? Yes. Yeah, they're, they're gift I did that because I got a gift certificate. Yeah. You know what else is really impressive is all. I mean, all the community support from businesses. Oh, absolutely. You got a lot of ads, ads in here. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, this really has become the community event, and you can see all the support right here, and all the support when you see the hordes of people on the sidewalks. Yeah, it is. It, it's it's pretty yeah. remarkable. Yeah. I remember it so fondly. You know, when I worked at the Crystal. Theater, oh, yeah. right. because we had different acts and we'd show cartoons during the day, mm -hmm. and then different performers mm -hmm. in the evening. For years and years, I was there at the Crystal, um, cleaning up. But you know, it wasn't a hardship. It was kind of sweet. Yeah. I think maybe ten, eleven years, something like that. You yeah, always go to a party. You know, there's a yeah. party you go to right afterwards. But it was at the <laughs> end of first night, Missoula, and about, like and eleven years in a row from. 94 to 02 or something. Wow. And now the uh, the Roxy Theater has picked up some of that. They oh, do the, sure. They'll, they'll do the Kung Fu movie marathon. Oh, So you can watch right. a lot of Kung Fu. And they also will have a uh, couple of couple of performing acts going on in, in the other, in the adjacent theater. Yeah, yeah. So. And just quickly, tell us just a, a brief bit about the Spotlight event. Yeah, the Spotlight cool. is... Yeah. Um, uh, our annual high school competition. Yeah. So we have, uh, and it, it, it's 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 the standard performing in front of three judges kind of thing, yeah. um, and we have an MC, uh, Billy Jenkins from Kiss FM, and um, and uh, we've we've gone through the preliminary round uh, with all of the. Uh, uh, at the various high schools, and then the winners, there are 13, I believe, there are 13 uh, finalists who will perform at the Wilma Theater, and that's at 8 o'clock uh, wow. on New Year's Eve. So you'll just see the best of the best. The best of the best. Yeah, because they've already gone through good. the ringer. Yeah, right. yeah. And I've seen some clips, video clips, and I've been impressed. They're, yeah. they're quite good, and some of them, some of them do a so, uh, sort of a piped-in karaoke track and, mm -hmm. and do a song and dance, and, and others will come up uh, with a guitar and, and sing their own composition. And, and uh, by the time they get to the, the finals, it's, it's very impressive. Yeah. Really and the nice. Wilma is full. And the Wilma's full. So don't just wander on up there at the yeah. last minute. Yeah. And it's, it's cheaper, too, to get the butt in, right? Isn't it more money on the day of the event? Yes. A couple yeah. of bucks yeah. more. So plan yeah. ahead. Yeah, but it's all going to a good place. Mm -hmm. Well, Tom, thank you so Thanks. much thank you. for coming. Thanks for putting this party together yeah, yet thanks another for putting year. The party You've been doing it a long time. Been doing yeah. it a long time. <laughs> but, but it's fun. It's, it's fun. It, it, it gets me through the, the gets me through the winter. Right. <laughs> well, you can rest after New Year. <laughs> You'll be right. so happy. Well, okay, we promised you we were going to read some Christmas-like stories. That's and right. my God, we're going to. Uh, right <laughs> when we get back. So stay with us. We'll be right back. It was the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds with visions of sugar plums danced in their heads and Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. 
Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wandering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be Saint Nick. More rapid than eagles, his courses they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donda and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop the courses they flew, with the sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkling I heard on the roof the prancing and pouring of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke had encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings then turned with a jerk and laying his finger aside on his nose and giving a nod up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and all a good night. The only thing we understand. Welcome back hey. to this edition of Missoula Live. So I'm going to read first yes. from um, Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tales. I, I vaguely remember this story as, as being kind of like a, a story of perverse giving, but we'll see what the, the listener says. I've never heard it, so say. I'm, I'm going to be listening carefully. Okay, it's the last dream of the old oak, but I just can't recall it. But when I did my Christmas search... This was one of the stories that came up as a good Christmas story. So here you go, the last dream of the old oak. In the forest, high on the steep shore and not far from the open sea coast, stood a very old oak tree. It was just 365 years old. But that long time, but that long time was to the tree as the same number of days might be to us. We wake by day and sleep by night, and then we have our dreams. It is different with the tree. It is obliged to keep awake through three seasons of the year and does not get any sleep until winter comes. Winter is its time for rest. It's night after the long day of spring, summer, and autumn. On many a warm summer, the ephemera that flies only, oh, the flies that only exist for a day had fluttered about the old oak enjoyed life and felt happy, and if for a moment one of the tiny creatures rested on one of his large, fresh leaves, the tree would always say, Poor little creature, your whole life consists only of a single day. How very short. It must be quite melancholy. Melancholy? What do you mean? The little creature would always reply. Everything around me is so wonderfully bright and warm and beautiful, it makes me joyous. But only for a day, and then it's all over. Over, repeated the fly. What is the meaning of all over? Are you all over too? No, I shall live likely for thousands of years, and my day is a whole season long. Indeed, it's so long that you could never reckon it out. No, then I don't understand you. You may have thousands of my days, but I have thousands of moments in which I can be merry and happy. 
Does all the beauty of the world cease when you die? No, replied the tree. It certainly will last much longer, infinitely longer than I can even think of. Well then, said the little fly, we have the, to the same time to live, only we reckon it differently. And the little creature danced and floated in the air, rejoicing in her delicate wings of gauze and velvet, rejoicing in the balmy breezes, laden with the fragrance of clover fields and wild roses, elder blossoms and honeysuckle. From the garden hedges, wild thyme, primroses and mint, and the scent of all these was so strong that the perfume almost intoxicated the little fly. The long and beautiful day had been so full of joy and sweet delights that when the sun sank low, it felt tired of all its happiness and enjoyment. Its wings could sustain it no longer, and gently and slowly it glided down the soft waving blades of grass, nodded its little head as well as it could nod, and slept peacefully and sweetfully. <laughs> the fly was dead. Poor little ephemera, said the oak, what a terribly short life. And so, on every summer day, the dance was repeated, and the same questions asked, and the same answers given. The same thing was continued through many generations of ephemera, and all of them felt quite merry and equally happy. The oak remained awake through the morning of spring, the noon of summer, and the evening of autumn. Its time of rest, its night, drew nigh. Winter was coming. Already the storms were singing, good night, good night. Here fell a leaf, and there fell a leaf. We will rock you and lull you. Go to sleep, go to sleep. We will sing you to sleep and shake you to sleep, and it will do your old twigs good. They will even crackle with pleasure. Sleep sweetly, sleep sweetly. It is your three hundredth and sixty-fifth night. Correctly speaking, you are but a youngster in the world. Sleep sweetly. The clouds will drop snow upon you which will be quite a coverlid, warm and sheltering to your feet. Sweet sleep to you and pleasant dreams. And there stood the oak, stripped of all its leaves, left to, to rest during the whole of the long winter, and to dream many dreams of events that had happened in its life, as in the dreams of men. The great tree had once been small. Indeed, in its cradle had been an acorn. According to human computation, it was now in the fourth century of its existence. It was the largest and best tree in the forest. Its summit towered above all the other trees and could be seen far out at sea so that it served as a landmark to the sailors. It had no idea how many eyes looked eagerly for it. In its topmost branches, the wood pigeon built her nest and the cuckoo carried out his usual vocal performances and his well-known notes echoed among the boughs. And in autumn, when the leaves looked like beaten copper plates, and the birds of passage would come and rest upon the branches before taking their flight across the sea. Now it was winter, and the tree stood leafless, so that everyone could see how crooked and bent were the branches that sprang forth from the trunk. Crows and rooks came by and sat on them and talked of hard times which were beginning and how difficult it was in the winter to obtain food. It was just about Holy Christmas time that the tree dreamed a dream. The tree had, doubtless, a kind of feeling that the festive time had arrived, and in his dream he fancied he heard bells ringing from all the churches round, and yet it seemed to him to be a beautiful summer's day, mild and warm. His mighty summits were crowned with spreading fresh green foliage. The sunbeams played among the leaves and branches, and the air was full of fragrance from herb and blossom. Painted butterflies chased each other. The summer flies danced around him, as if the world had been created merely for them to dance and be merry in. All that had happened to the tree during every year of his life seemed to pass before him as if in a festive procession. He saw the knights of olden times and noble ladies ride through the wood on their gallant steeds with plumes waving in their hats and falcons on their wrists. The hunting horn sounded and the dogs barked. He saw hostile warriors in colored dresses and glittering armor with spear and halberd pitching their tents and anon striking them. The watch fires again blazed and men sang and slept under the hospitable shelter of the tree. He saw lovers meet in quiet happiness near him in the moonshine and carve the initials of their names in the grayish green bark on his trunk. 
Once but long years had intervened since then. Guitars and aeolian harps had been hung on his bows by merry travelers. Now they seemed to hang there again, and he could hear their marvelous tones. The wood pigeons cooed as if to explain the feelings of the tree, and the cuckoo called out to tell him how many summer days he had yet to live. Then it seemed as if new life were thrilling through every fiber of the root and stem and leaf, rising even to the highest branches. The tree felt itself stretching and spreading out, while through the root beneath the earth lay the warm vigor of life. And as he grew higher and still higher with increased strength, his topmost boughs become broader and fuller, and in proportion to his growth, so was his self-satisfaction increased. And with it arose a joyous longing to grow higher and higher, to reach even to the warm, bright sun itself. Already had his topmost branches pierced the clouds, which floated beneath them like troops of passage. On large white swans, every leaf seemed gifted with sight, as if possessed eyes to see. The stars became visible in broad daylight, and large, sparkling, like clear, gentle eyes. They recalled to the memory the well-known look in the eyes of a child or in the eyes of lovers who had once met beneath the branches of the old oak. These were wonderful and happy moments for the old tree, full of peace and joy, and yet amidst all this happiness, the tree felt a yearning, a longing desire that all the other trees, bushes, herbs, and flowers beneath him might be able also to rise higher as he has done and to see all this splendor and experience the same happiness. But where is the little blue flower that grows by the water, asked the oak and the purple bell flower and the daisy. You see, the oak wanted to have them all with him. Here we are, here we are, sounded in a voice and a song. But the beautiful time of last summer, where is that? And the lilies of the valley, which last year covered the earth with their bloom, and the wild apple tree with its lovely blossoms, and all the glory of the wood, which had flourished year after year. Even what may have but now sprouted forth could be with us here. We are here, we are here, sounded voices higher in the air, as if they had flown there beforehand. Well, this is beautiful, too beautiful to be believed, said the oak in a joyful tone. I have them all here, both great and small. Not one has been forgotten. Can such happiness be imagined? It seemed almost impossible. In heaven with the eternal God, it can be imagined, and it is possible, sounded the reply through the air. And the old tree as it still grew upwards and onwards, felt that his roots were loosening themselves from the earth. It is right, so it is best, said the tree. No fetters hold me now. I can fly up to the very highest point in light and glory, and all I love are with me, both small and great. All are here. Such was the dream of the old oak, and while he dreamed, a mighty storm came rushing over land and sea at the holy Christmas time. The sea rolled in great billows towards the shore. There was a cracking and crushing herd in the tree. The root was torn from the ground just at that moment, when in his dream he fancied it was being loosened from the earth. He fell, his 365 years were passed as the single day of the ephemera. On the morning of Christmas Day, when the sun rose, the storm had ceased. From all the churches sounded the festive bells, and from every hearth, even of the smallest hut rose the smoke into the blue sky like the smoke from the festive thank offerings on the Druid's altars. The sea gradually became calm, and on board a great ship that had withstood the tempest during the night, all the flags were displayed as a token of joy and festivity. The tree is down, the old oak, our landmark on the coast, exclaimed the sailors. It must have fallen in the storm of last night. Who can replace it, alas? No one. This was a funeral oration over the old tree, short but well meant. There it lay stretched on the snow-covered shore, and over it sounded the notes of a song from the ship, a song of Christmas joy and of the redemption of the soul of man and of eternal life through Christ's atoning blood. Sing aloud on the happy morn, all is fulfilled for Christ is born. With songs of joy let us loudly sing hallelujahs to Christ our King. Thus sounded the old Christmas carol, and everyone on board the ship felt his thoughts elevated through the song and the prayer, even as the old tree 
had lifted up its last, its beautiful dream on that Christmas morn. So that's uh, why it's a Christmas story. Yes, it's but beautiful. But it's kind of, it is kind of beautiful. Like I like Hans Christian Andersen has this very hallucinogenic, yes. gentle view of like the end of life or the meaning of time. So I felt yes. that I hadn't really read that story it before reading it aloud. It is very sweet when he's when he's pushing he's up and he feels yeah, his roots right. loosening and all of his dead little friends are talking. To right, him. but that Lovely. you know that was the beauty of all the little people of the yeah. forest. But it's very similar, like you have beautiful uh, transformation in death. Mm -hmm. Like it seems really awful for the tree or the person. But it's all relative to their experience. Right. And the whole temporal thing yeah. that he does. Talking to the cool. little ephemera. Yes. I think Ben Franklin wrote a beautiful yes. essay, I right, on the ephemera. Yes. You got to say the word ephemera several times. Yeah, that's I'm pretty good. I'm jealous about. Well, you have at it. There's a little time. I have one little contemporary poem that I just came across today, and I think it's so beautiful. And it takes a, um, as it's, uh, is it epi epigraph? Uh, a, uh, an old, old English song, and then it, come, it was published in 2003. It is a Christmas song by Norman Williams. And the epigraph is, Christmas is coming, the goose is getting fat, please put a penny in the old man's hat. If you haven't got a penny, a halfpenny will do. If you haven't got a halfpenny, God bless you. Tonight the wide, wet flakes of snow drift down like Christmas suicides, layering the eaves and boughs until the landscape seems transformed as from a night of talk or love. I've come from cankered ports and railroad hubs to winter in a northern state. Three months of wind and little light, wood split, Flu cleaned and ashes hauled, I am now proof against the cold and make a place before the stove. Mired fast in middle age, possessed of staved-in barn and brambled lot, I think of that fierce-minded woman whom I loved, painting in a small, unheated room or of a friend, sharp-ribbed from poverty, who framed and fitted out his house by hand and writes each night by kerosene. I think, that is, of others who withdrew from commerce and the world to work for joy instead of gain. Oh, would I... Oh, would that I could gather them this yuletide and shower them with coins. Oh, that's really sweet. Isn't that nice? I like that sentiment, too. You know, I, I remember that song. You know, if you don't have anything, then God bless you. Then God you. bless you. Yeah. So that's for all of our artist friends. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kim, thank you for that. Yeah. He, oh, Scott says we have two minutes. What should we do with it? We have two minutes. I have a little uh, I have a oh, little that one short looks, one. That's a two-paragraph. This is Walter two D. Le Maire. stanza. Or... Yes, Walter D. Le Maire, famous okay. poet, written in 1913, and it's called Mistletoe. Sitting under the mistletoe, pale green fairy mistletoe, one last candle burning low, all the sleepy dancers gone, just one candle burning on, shadows lurking everywhere. Someone came and kissed me there. Tired I was, my head would go nodding under the mistletoe, pale green fairy mistletoe. No footsteps came, no voice, but only just as I sat there, sleepy, lonely, stooped in the still and shadowy air, lips unseen, and kissed me there. Nice. Well, goodness, I guess yeah. we've got to go then. Merry Christmas. Yes. Happy holidays, everybody. All holidays. I understand that there are 38 different holidays being celebrated around this Around the time. solstice yes. time. So that, happy holidays to everyone. Whichever one or however many you celebrate. <laughs> yes. And then if the fates allow, we'll see you not in two weeks. It's too soon. No. We'll see you in, the, in, in 2015 is the best way of putting it. Great. Yeah. So thank you for watching. For MCAT, I'm Jill Baird. And I'm Kim Anderson. Happy holidays. See you later, guys. <laughs>